Dragon And there's the king There's a girl He got a dragon egg And he's also an asshole This council has a great expense Better the city watch to your exacting standards Enforce my laws but understand Any further performances like last night's will be answered Man, you ain't gonna do Sir Otto Hightower, second son to the Hightower name, uh, Hand of the King, an all around douchebag. I hate Sir Otto Hightower. He's sneaky, he's manipulative. He, uh, I believe he's instrumental in murdering Queen Emma. I believe he was instrumental in the death of all of Viserys and Emmett's sons. And I believe that he is a part of a grand conspiracy with the Maesters to destroy the House of the Dragon and to supplant them in place uh, one of the houses of the Andals who conquered the first man onto the Iron Throne. Let me explain. Okay, so everything that's happened bad to the Targaryen house has benefited Sir Otto Hightower. If you look at it, you heard directly from Viserys' mouth. The only way that Sir Otto became Hand of the King was because Viserys' father the son of the former king, Jaehaerys, died five days after he was named Hand of the King. Your Grace. Five days. I'm sorry, Your Grace. Though it was some time ago, the details, they fade in memory. My father was a hale and healthy warrior and dragon rider at the peak of his abilities. Jaehaerys named the great royal hunt to celebrate the name of Hand of the King. Five days later, my father lay dead. Now this is a huge clue. The showrunners are putting clues all throughout the show. This isn't the first one that lets you know that Sir Otto, Otto Hightower is a sneaky SOB. I'm telling you, all right, uh, we'll give you more evidence. I'm gonna give you more evidence, but let's just, let's just center on what Viserys just said. Five days. My father was a great and hell warrior, a dragon rider in his prime of life. And he was snuffed out during a, a freaking hunt. You know, a lot of the kings and lords and ladies even, looking at you, Damon, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them die in hunts. And that's true in actual history. A lot of kings and lords die in hunting accidents. Makes me think of uh, when that senator who voted against the Republicans went on a hunting trip with his good old buddy, uh, Dick Cheney. And uh, he got shot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he got shot in the face, brother. And it's like, yeah, that, that happens a lot. And soon after that hunting trip, he never went against the Republican Party again. Yeah, I mean, it's the same type of intrigue. And it, that's the thing about Otto. Otto, <coughs> he's slick. Otto's good at doing something. He's good at throwing stones and hiding his hand. The problem when you throw stones and hide your hand is that somebody noticed there's dirt on your fingers. Somebody notices that how come this dude is just so perfect? Every Someone always noticing that. And that person who noticed is, of course, Damon, which explains the relationship between Damon, Otto, and Viserys. Now, look at how Otto belittles Damon. He's already convinced the king to keep changing his job. 
to keep him as far away from the king as possible. He only gives him jobs that keeps him away from court and that keeps him away from the king. When he was master of coin, he could actually be at court. He was needed to be there. But now that he's no longer master of coin and he's the head of the city watch, that means go out in the city. No, you can't be in the court all day. He, he wants, he's isolating the series from all others. But just, just take a listen. Just enforcing the crown's laws. You agree, Lord My prince, I don't think the public spectacle of wanton brutality is hardly in line with our laws. You've also had a corner of the realm of right now descending upon King's landing for my brother's turn. Do you want the luck to rape, murdered? You might know this unless you left the safety of the Red Keep, but not just in climbing the sea, but small focus of all this. Terrifying. Our city should be safe for its people. I agree. I just hope we don't have to name half of my city to achieve this. See there, that look. You instantly see the enmity and the frustration on Otto's face. He knows that Damon knows what he's talking about. He knows that Damon is competent. He knows that yes, Damon is rough around the edges and Damon is cocky and he kind of uses his privilege to his advantage. But you know what? So do all the lords and ladies. And Damon understands the politics. He understands human nature. And he would really advise the king properly. You can see how Otto is frustrated and flustered at the fact that all it took was for Damon to make a reasonable argument, a simple, reasonable argument, no yelling. He didn't overreact, nothing. He told him, we need to make the city safe. We need to do this, we need to do that because they're having an attorney, lawyers and ladies are coming. Shouldn't that be what I'm doing? And he's kind of making, he put Otto on the spot and Otto is infuriated. Every little slight that Damon does, Otto pays back. He's petty like that. Uh, when Damon gets the favor of Allison in order to beat up her brother, <laughs> he beats up her brother. Or no, no, not her brother, her uh I believe it was uh, her cousin beat the daylights out of that boy in front of Otto because I'm doing this to him because I wanted to it to you and the message is clear and he just embarrasses that house like the dragon will always destroy the high towers the dragons will always defeat the high towers and and that's why the dynamic between him Damon and uh, Otto is very interesting. And you can see Viserys in that scene where he just kind of looks in between the two because he doesn't know, he doesn't think for himself. And see, Otto knows that and Otto uses that to his advantage. Damon knows that and Damon's like, come on, you idiot, big brother. Come on, man. Like, think with, think common sense. And you don't want common sense when you're dealing with a conspiracy. So Otto, again, figures out a way to get rid of Damon by putting out the lie that he said a prince for the day. No one can confirm or deny that he said this. And again, the slight that Damon makes against Otto in this scene is going to lead up to uh, Otto concocting this insult for the series after Emma dies. See, he he knew he knew what he was doing. It, it's a double slap actually. And Otto is really petty. So I'm gonna show you the scene where Damon makes his comment and then I'm gonna show you next to it the scene where he tells the series what Damon supposedly said. And you you tell me what he's doing. If only the prince would show the same devotion to his lady wife as he does his work, your grace. She'd not been seen in the Vale or at Runestone for quite some time. I think my bronze bitch is happier for my absence. Lady Rhea is your wife, a good and honorable lady of the Vale. In the Vale, men are said to fuck sheep instead of women. I can assure you, the sheep are prettier. Tell me. Now here you see Otto trying another tactic to use against Damon. Okay, the City Watch angle didn't work. Let's bring up his wife. Let's bring up his relationship with his wife. He's supposed to be in Runestone, in the Vale. 
you see, he didn't even marry. Okay. So Otto made him marry a lesser house of the veil. And he's the sec- he's the heir apparent to the throne. And you're not going to give him a high lady of a vast house. I mean, Runestone, of course. Beautiful house, but why does he want him to be in the Vale? The Vale is in the Riverlands, isn't it? Far away from King's Landing, isn't it? Doesn't the Vale sit somewhere between uh, Heron Hall and, and and the Starks, uh, the North? Like it's somewhere in the middle of the South and the North, so it's away from King's Landing. This is where Otto wants to do he wants to keep Damon away because again as you saw in the the scene before Damon wants he to be sent to Viserys because Viserys is so placable and you can he's so malleable you can just mold him into who you want him to be and I mean clearly Otto is feeling threatened by Damon in this moment. So he brings up his wife. Well, you haven't even consummated your marriage. You're not even being a good husband to your wife. I wish he would show as much devotion to his wife as he does his work. And it's like, really? You gonna, you gonna bring that up? And you see Damon's face. You see how upset he got. Well, let's see how upset he makes Otto when he responds. You made a vow before the Seven to honor your wife in marriage. I'd gladly give Lady Rare to you, Lord Hightower, if you're in want of a woman to warm your bed. Your own lady wife passed recently. Did she not? Otto. Now, Otto has revealed himself. Almost lost control almost completely lost control and he stands up about to be prepared to fight because those are fighting words David just said he just mentioned his wife he just mentioned this man's wife and she just died not too long ago oh the slap in the face the slap in the face and look at David's face. Hold on, hold on. Look at David's face. <laughs> he like, got him. Now Otto over here looking dusty. He looking real dusty right now. <laughs> Bro looking real upset right now. He mad, mad. He he over here. He about to uh, he about to blow a bud vessel in his damn forehead. He he about to lose it. But he gets his composure. And he's like, I will not forget this. And every little slight, every little slight, from the thing with Allison on to this, and every little thing, he is saying that he is going to repay him in full. Oh, you going to make my nephew look like a punk? Well, I'm going to get one of the best nights, um, and I'm going to uh, have him unseat you somehow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It would be funny if he, like poisoned uh, his wine and made him like drunk or something but I don't think he did that I just think Chris Nicole got the better of Damon but now look at this next scene when he reveals what Damon said about the king son and being uh, heir for a day and all that I corroborated this report with three separate witnesses the evening was by all accounts celebration the heir for a day did you say it? Who's the Lord in our own way, Your Grace? Now this is a very skilled move by Otto because it's a double slap. Like I said, it's okay. He's just provoking me. You know how my brother makes sport of provoking you? Must you indulge him? My apologies, Your Grace. What happens when he says something about your wife or your child in jest? Will it just be, oh, he's just provoking you, don't feed into it? No, the idiot creates a schism within his own kingdom because he got emotional. Which is that which is exactly what Otto wanted. Otto wanted Damon out. 
Damon had to be gone because Otto knew his his neck, his life was on the line. Otto would have been found out and killed the moment Damon ascended the throne. This was a, a brilliant stroke by Otto, a brilliant move in the game of power because that's what this is. These are the 48 laws of power and he's being very cunning. And uh, he's implementing some of those laws of power uh, by keeping Viserys isolated. He can be his great advisor and everything I'm doing is for the benefit of the kingdom. You know, and Damon sees through it. Damon has always seen through it and people like Otto don't like people who see through their act. And so he's, whether Damon said it or not, should Viserys take away his airship? No. This was a petty move and this is the reason why I believe during the funeral, during his wife's funeral, when Vaymon is going off about uh, strong blood of Valerians and stuff like that, Damon laughs. Damon laughs at all the stuff that's going on because it's all Viserys' fault. It's all Viserys' fault because he was all emotional and he let Otto manipulate him into hating his brother and being petty towards his brother. And so Otto won that one. And now, you know, fast forward, you know, you got Damon gone, Emma ends up dying, but we haven't even gotten to the good part with Otto. So let's, let's show the good part. Um, this is the scene where Otto and, where the maester comes up to Otto and tells him that Queen Emma is in labor. And they don't say nothing to the series. So, so watch this tourney scene. Watch it. Um, what the, was that? What, what was that? Why, why, what was that? Why did the, okay, okay. Let's, let's understand Otto's position. Otto is the hand of the king. He is his great right hand, right? He has some councils. He's, <coughs> he's the man that, he's his closest advisor, right? In matters of state. Why would the maester go to him to talk about the king's wife being in labor? Before he goes to the king. Shouldn't the king know that? He, the maester left it up to Otto to tell the king. That's very telling. Because that implies that the maesters are under Otto's influence, not the king's. And this shot, this scene, but this shot right here, really shows you what's really going on in the realm. It really shows you who's really ruling. And it ain't serious. It's Otto. Otto is ruling by, by proximity to the king. And he's doing it in a very sneaky and very cunning way. He's also, uh, he's also conspiring because this, this is where my idea for the conspiracy comes from from the fact that the maesters are so beholden to Otto and this incident with the baby I want to show you another scene right after this after Emma is giving birth and the look on the maester's face as he holds the boy because he knows he's not going to live through the night but that's just let me just show you congratulations your grace you have a son it's a boy and you have your grace how do you and the queen show the name Thank you. recognizes something. He recognizes something wrong with the baby. And he's kind of shocked. What does he recognize? Is it that the baby's coughing? Why is the baby coughing? They've removed all the phlegm and all the mucus in the membrane from the baby's mouth. They removed every they they've gotten all that stuff out. They know what they're doing. Why do the septas look down? Why are they looking down? As if they're ashamed of something. And who was that other maester that just walked up to Otto? Is he just a messenger for the Grand Maester? Or because the Grand Maester couldn't leave? Or is there something else afoot here? I don't know. But I think this is just me. This is just my theory. Uh, this is backed by no evidence at all but my twisted mind. But I think that that other maester did something 
put something in the medicine or the drink or something. Gave her too much. Something. Somebody did something they were not supposed to do. And the look of horror on the, the, the midwives' faces is like... It, it tells the, the story of what they just did. They just butchered that woman. And the baby dies. The baby doesn't live through the night. Now, if you go along with my theory that Otto has been killing every male born to the king, I mean, every male that's born to the king dies. Now, when they have the council after, uh, when they have the small council with just the maester and Otto and Viserys after Emmer's dead and the baby's dead and he's named Rhaenyra his heir and all this Viserys brings up the fact that uh, Corliss wants to marry his daughter to Viserys to unite their houses and Viserys is like Ugh, she's a child now, this is the thing. The series expects Rhaenyra to marry for duty, but he doesn't do it. You know, that was her whole argument. And she's right. I mean, he should have married Lena, Valeria. He should have married her, united the houses, united the bloodlines, which strengthens the bloodlines in the long run. And that shows unity to the other houses in Westeros. It solidifies the Targaryen rule. It solidifies their power. Two bloodlines from old Valeria, the Valerians and the Targaryens. I mean, it's perfect, right? Your grace, Valeria Lena. Let's combine the strength of our houses and demonstrate my reign's strongest days are ahead, not behind. All courses is overreached, your grace. Such matters must be discussed with a small council. That is what I'm doing, presently. So, what is your advice, dear Otto? The Lady Lena. Is young, your hands. Indeed, but the wounds made by the Great Council still linger, my king. A match with their daughter would go a long way towards sealing the breach, and uniting the two great Valyrian houses would certainly signal unity throughout the realm and beyond. The Grand Master's reasoning is sound. I do fear that Valyrian makes it. Does it matter, your grace? Her mother has passed. Her father must propagate the royal line. And even the Maester says this. He says it, and Otto gives him a look. See, this is the problem with the whole Maester conspiracy. I don't think that the Grand Maester himself is in on it. I don't think or if he is in on it, he's repentant because the look of concern he has for this baby doesn't look like a cold-blooded murderer. It looks like someone who has something's clicked for them because he sees there's something wrong with this baby too. And who does it serve? Because understand that soon after this you know Otto's going to be sending Allison to the king you think the Grand Maester isn't going to hear about that you think there's not going to be whispers about Lady Allison in the king's bed chambers at night think about it and so the Grand Maester's like yeah you should have married uh, Lena Valerian and the look Otto gives him, for me, is what solidified my theory that Otto is plotting, has been plotting, and has been murdering the series and Emma's children. All of the males born to them. I believe it was, what, five stillbirths? All of them boys. The only child born to them happens to be a girl. Is that a coincidence? Maybe Otto thought, maybe if I have a son, I can marry him to her. And he will have an elevated station. And it, it also makes his branch of the family look honorable. Because again, he's a second son, and he has that envy of not being the heir of the Hightower throne or lordship. So I feel like there's a lot of scheming going on. Uh, and I feel like 
because soon after this, after the time skip, you don't see this maester anymore. He could have passed, but you don't really see him much after him agreeing that Viserys should marry um, the young lady Valeria. And I don't, I think, gets rid of him. Maybe Otto even has him. But who knows, man? Uh, he chooses Allison or used Allison to maneuver his bloodline onto the throne. And now he's back. Now he's back in full force. And there's nothing stopping him uh, except for Rhaenyra and Jaime. And that's, that's going to, of course, end in a dance of the dragons. But I believe that this conspiracy that Otto is not just about Otto. It's bigger than Otto. It's bigger than the Grand Maester. I believe that it is House Hightower itself and a few of the other houses and the Maesters of the Citadel conspiring to get rid of magic in all of its forms. Because, again, that's paganism for them. And that was one reason why they had to leave what was it, Essos or something? The, the people, the Andals aren't from, they, they were religious zealots when they came to West Coast. And so, maybe they got kicked out, similar to uh, how America was born. Maybe they got kicked out of their homeland. Maybe they got booted because of their religious practices. And so, um, they're very Puritan-like. So I, I believe that the, there are a few houses and the maesters conspiring to get rid of what they view as uh, paganism and what they view as um, like the Targaryens marrying within their own bloodline and actually being able to control dragons and whatever magic art, whatever dark art gave them that ability, they have it now. And I believe that's a big concern for the other houses in Westeros. And that there's this conspiracy to get the Targaryens off the throne, keep them off the throne, and to rule in the light of the seven. <laughs> um, but I think that's all for the day. Um, I'm going to leave it there. And hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, like and subscribe if you did. Listeners, all the followers, um, and until next time. This council has, at great expense, better the city watch to your exacting standards. Enforce my laws, but understand. Any further performances like last night's will be answered. Ain't gonna do shit.